name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Come today to the second Sunday in this season of Advent as we prepare not just for Christ to be celebrated at Christmas, but for his second coming when he will come to judge the world. In our Advent, on our Advent candles today, we will be thinking of the prophets, those people who predicted the coming of Christ and who warned people to be ready for him. Last week, the first of our candles reminded us of the patriarchs, the ancestors of God's people, now the prophets who guided those people. God our Father, you spoke to the prophets of old of a saviour who would bring peace. You helped them to spread the joyful message of his coming kingdom. Help us as we prepare to celebrate his birth, to share with those around us the good news of your power and love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you call us to repent of our sins Soften our proud and stubborn hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you declared the forgiveness of God. Teach us to forgive one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you search our hearts and show us the truth. Direct us in your way of righteousness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. you out because we don't say the um, Gloria in Advent, but we now pray our collect for today. O oh Lord, raise up, we pray, your power, and come among us, and with great might succor us, that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are grievously hindered, in running the race that is set before us, your bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort. O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. 
a voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of the Lord. A portion of Psalm 85. We start with the response. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. A reading from the second letter of Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, 
And then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace and without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, that all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. May I speak in the name of God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and Holy Spirit the Comforter. Amen. We've been looking after our grandchildren this week. It's great in lots of ways. We get to know them really well. And likewise, they get to know us. We're not just visitors. We're an integral part of their family life. And they turn to us readily for help and support. We have fun times. We play games. We teach each other things. And we learn much about ourselves as well as we do so. Of course, there are downsides too such as a total exhaustion from trying to keep up with a three-year-old and a five-year-old, as you might have guessed. And when they're naughty, we have to lay down the law. And when they fall out, we have to separate and pacify, as well as reprimand. But watching them grow and watching them change makes it all worth the effort. And we really wouldn't have it any other way. Now, my granddaughter appeared a couple of weeks ago, having entered out the entire contents of her chest of drawers and unceremoniously scattered it across our whole room and gleefully paraded in her Christmas jumper. I wanted to ask, isn't it a bit too early to be wearing that? But of course I didn't. And I felt like saying, if you start wearing your Christmas jumper now, and it's special, isn't it? 
It won't feel special by the time you get to Christmas Day. But I didn't say that either, of course. I just admired it and suggested she tidy her room. But if we look at the shops and the houses, even at the end of November, even before that, it was already looking like it was Christmas, with the twinkling lights and decorations on show. Now, I'm not a killjoy, don't worry, and I really do like to see all these things, but Christmas really does seem to have started rather early this year. I think I know why. We want to prepare for something. People are feeling rather down and a bit depressed, obviously, with the events around COVID since March. It seems never ending. We need something to look forward to and something to lift our spirits. We need comfort. We need hope. And comfort and hope are the themes that we are offered on this second Sunday of Advent. In that wonderful passage that we heard from Isaiah 40. I just love Isaiah, don't you? It's very full of physical metaphors of hearing and seeing, of speaking and crying. In these physical senses, the message of comfort is communicated. And there's also the experience of time, demonstrated in the contrast between what seems like the fleeting nature of our human lives and the constancy of God's word. Even the very structure of the passage wraps us up in a warm embrace that God provides, who speaks to us of tenderness and comfort. And the divine shepherds who scoops us up gently and carries us home. So it takes us a while, therefore, to realize that this description is actually portrayed as happening in the midst of a period of penitential wilderness, when the people of God are described as being released from an era of punishment for wrongdoing in the past. We have those very famous words. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. I don't know about you, but I always think of that opening song in the musical Godspell. If you haven't heard it or seen it, you really should. No, don't worry, I'm not going to sing it to you at the moment, if you know it. I'm out of practice for a start. But today we are surely thinking of the opening lines of Mark's Gospel, upon which Godspell was based. The very first words are, the beginning. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending a messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now, as I thought about jumpers and this sermon, I kind of wondered if Mark, the gospel writer, would perhaps have worn his Christmas jumper. But no, I doubt very much that he would. In his gospel, there is no Christmas narrative. So we miss out on all the mystery and all the miracles surrounding Christmas. There are no angels. No shepherds, no Herod, not even a starry night. In Mark's Gospel, the miracles of Jesus and the miracles of Christmas just don't appear. It's all about Jesus' later life. Nor does Mark substitute some other happy occasion either. He opens his Gospel with this huge announcement of who Jesus is and not even from a glowing angel with wings. No, his messenger is John the Baptist, or John the Baptizer, as he's called these days. No Christmas jumpers for him. He wears coarse clothes 
and no mince pies. He eats insects. We meet John in the wilderness, wearing clothes made of camel hair and eating locusts and wild honey. He is an ascetic. That is, he practices a radical level of self-discipline and denial. That isn't good news for Christmas lovers. We're more in favor of figgy pudding than locusts. Mark announces to his readers that Jesus has come, but he leaves out the tale of the birth and the growing up and gets straight on to the so-called grown-up business. There's certainly a sense of urgency and importance about Mark's gospel, and he drops something of a bombshell right at the start. You see, everybody in that day was told that Caesar was a god. He was the divine one that they called the son of God. Mark will have none of this. And so he undermines that from the very beginning. And to stress that this is something huge, he echoes the words from the creation story. This is the beginning. And it is the good news of Jesus Christ the Son of God. This was inflammatory. All others who imagined that they were messiahs or like Caesar, called themselves the Son of God, were imposters. How would Caesar feel to know that Jesus was coming along and he was indeed the real Son of God? I suspect he would have felt a bit like Herod the Great when he found out there was somebody going to be born who was going to be king of the Jews. Herod the Great, of course, tried to kill Jesus by, yes, killing all the little boys in Bethlehem. Of course, he didn't succeed in his strategy. Sadly, John the Baptist was not able to elude harm. And when, predictably, the son of Herod the Great, the new King Herod, that's King Antipas, came looking for him, John did indeed lose his head. With the opening lines of this gospel, Mark has fired a mighty challenge, and he's in no doubt that he sets Jesus apart from all the others but he doesn't show it as his birth, not his birth at Bethlehem, but his death on the cross. The next time that Mark, the gospel writer, will use these words, son of God, is when Jesus was crucified. Mark suggests that the greatest significance of Jesus was not that a star lit up the sky or that the major traveled to his home to bring gifts. Indeed, not even that he is the child of the Virgin Mary. For Mark, the importance of Jesus was that he was the presence of the living God on earth and that he had died for humanity on a cross. We are approaching Christmas and when it does arrive, it will, hopefully, still be a time of wonder and hope and sharing and imagination. But in Advent, we are still in the time of waiting and preparation. Just as John declared repentance, we should prepare ourselves for changing and reorientating our lives towards God. And that brings us full circle from the wilderness of repentance that we heard about in Isaiah and how God comforts us and offers us hope in these very uncertain times to today and the choices we make. We think of repent as saying sorry. We use the word at our confession we repent of our sins. 
The Greek metanoia actually means change. It means that you are not like a train set on a railway line which dictates just where you go. As John the Baptist says, you can make your own paths, good ones, straight ones. You don't have to walk the same path. You don't have to repeat the same mistakes. You can change. John proclaims repentance for forgiveness of sins. Understanding forgiveness allows us to change, to move away from the past. Gives us the chance to embrace the future, the present and the future, even with its tough challenges. And to step out into the future with hope. He promises Jesus and the presence of God's Holy Spirit to be with his people. We are told that all the people of Jerusalem went out to see John the baptizer and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Perhaps that is why Mark's gospel doesn't record all the miracles of Jesus or of Christmas because he begins his gospel with such good news, that because of Jesus, we have the opportunity to repent, to change direction, to find forgiveness with God. And that must be the greatest miracle of all. Amen. to stand and proclaim our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for the capacity to wait purposefully and actively this Advent season. Just as you are patient with us, loving God, may we show patience in understanding your time scale is different to ours. We give thanks for the ministry of John the Baptist, and we ask that we can respond to his call for repentance and change confident in the good news of Jesus Christ. Prepare in us holiness and godliness for all that lies ahead, our generous and comforting God. Lord, in your mercy. Ever-present God, we pray for a church which can be both prophetic and pastoral a church which is worthy of being the body of Christ, 
which can inspire and challenge, nurture and teach in this secular age. As the world cries out for leadership, as the world shows its need for spiritual space, let the church lift up the example of your son, sharing his message with those who will listen, both within and beyond our congregations. May the heralding of the birth of Jesus be an inspiration for the church in the world to be a standard bearer for you. Lord, in your mercy. Faithful God, we pray that your promises to humanity, even through the matriarchs, patriarchs and prophets, are heard by those who struggle in the world, as well as by those who wield power and influence. At this time, we pray for our own government, negotiating with the EU and the USA, that resolutions to differences may be found and goodwill be preserved for future concord. We pray especially for places and people in turmoil, remembering the current difficulties in Syria, Lebanon and the Middle East. We pray for peace between Israel and Palestine, as well as genuine resolve to live peaceably together in the land into which Christ was born. We also ask that you watch over those we seldom hear about, yet who are facing extreme hardship and hopelessness. Let them know you are with them, as you always stand by the oppressed. Be the guide of those who seek to help, and give us general, generous hearts at this time of giving. Lord, in your mercy, Loving God, in our community, we pray for those in Keyworth who live or work on Barrow Slade, Roseland Close, and Hawthorne Close, and the concerns and celebrations taking place within our whole benefice. And here in Nottingham and beyond, we pray for the university students who are due to travel home for the Christmas break, and their families and friends. Indeed, we bring before you all who need to travel in these times, who may have difficult choices to make about to whom and to where they travel. We hold before you all those at the forefront of research and administration of vaccines against coronavirus. We pray for those smitten by COVID-19, for the carers, nurses and doctors families and friends administering to those who are vulnerable or poorly with any ailment or illness. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Healing God, we remember the sick and the distressed in body, mind and spirit, especially those known to us personally and those in our benefice in particular need at this time. In the silence of this sacred space, we briefly name in our hearts and minds those for whom we pray. Lift the spirits of the carers and the cared for, the sad, the depressed, and those in pain, bringing hope where there is absence. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our healer and savior. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Eternal God, we praise for those, pray for those who have died, remembering those recently deceased, Dennis Cumberbatch and Clifford Willoughby Gretton and those whose anniversary of death are remembered at this time. William John Windridge, Minnie Mason, John Edward Wyatt, Lillian Hartley, Maurice Ernest Dayville. 
May they rest in your eternal kingdom. May loved ones hold on to fond memories in their loss. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, shared it with them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did in him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary, the mother of God, Mary Magdalene, the apostles and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen.
awaiting his coming in glory. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who sent your Son to redeem the world and will send him again to be our judge, give us grace so to imitate him in the humility and purity of his first coming, that when he comes again, we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's the first time we've been able to meet again here in St. Mary the Virgin. And for the next couple of Sundays, it will just be on Sundays that we're able to meet together. That will change over on the 20th um, when we go into our Christmas program through until Epiphany, because it's the first time you've been here, you haven't had a chance to admire Sue's handiwork, which is if you come a little closer, you'll discover she's been particularly clever here, because we had to work quite carefully with the amount of cloth that we could actually purchase in the time we had, um, but you shouldn't notice that from where you're sitting. At the end of our service after the blessing, I'm going to show Bishop Paul's um, Advent and Christmas message. I hope you're able to see the pictures on the screen, but you should be able to hear him. Um, and we'll play that before um, Michael plays us out at the end of the service. Our Advent 
activities continue tomorrow with our Advent study group. And if you've not already joined that, you're welcome to do so. Um, ask for the details and we can point you in the right direction. Now let's stand as we pray for God's blessing. May God himself, the God of peace, make you perfect and holy and keep you safe and blameless in spirit, soul and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.